Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have another crazy current events video for you guys, and we got another case of a politician not knowing what they're talking about and blaming Grand Theft Auto for real world problems and real world violence. Now, like I've said many times in this channel before, I hate talking any kind of politics on this channel because this is not a political channel. This is a gaming channel. The only time I ever actually talk anything related to politics is when it affects video games because, you know, it's something that we all like and enjoy. You know, politics should stay out of video games and politicians should not try to regulate video games or blame video games for real world problems. But unfortunately, you have politicians and the media that go ahead and do it anyways. And in today's case, you know, we had a video a few weeks ago about, you know, stupid politicians in Chicago in the U.S. actually blaming Grand Theft Auto for carjackings and they wanted to ban Grand Theft Auto. Auto. And now here in Australia, um, I don't know if they're calling for a ban, but they are blaming Grand Theft Auto for real world problems. And this guy, um, uh, cor somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I know a lot of you guys that watch me are from Australia, so you will know who this guy is. But he is the um, he is the defense minister, I believe right now. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. He used to be the minister for home affairs. But Anyways, um, this guy has a pretty important position in the government in Australia. That's the point that I'm making. And so this guy was being interviewed on the media, and the media was specifically talking about violence against women, in which he just completely starts talking about Grand Theft Auto. So they ask him a question about violence against women, and he just proceeds to start talking about how teenagers are playing Grand Theft Auto and are badly influenced by it. Just listen to this. The thing that's missing in this debate is the involvement of social media, the viciousness, and and also the unfiltered content but that what teenage are you boys you and others. Sue everyone? No, I, I, it's a very difficult thing to I, get hold of. I, I think what I think what we what we should demand is the same laws that apply in real life apply online. So if you're flicking through TikTok videos uh, and there is content on there that is unfiltered, going into the minds of young impressionable boys and girls then we need to think about what happens here. If you're playing Grand Theft Auto as a 13-year-old boy, and lots of teenage boys will do, you can get in that game, not just, you know, drive cars recklessly. Uh, you can go for a lap dance. You can go uh, and shoot police. And so we need to have a broader conversation about the influences on those young boys, both in a family setting and a societal setting, and particularly online. It sounds very prime ministerial, isn't it? So you guys see right there, um, GTA was blamed once again, and, you know, I just found this so bizarre because I found this clip originally from, um, you know, people were commenting on my videos and they were telling me that Australia wants to ban GTA 5, and so I looked this clip up and I found it, but, you know, if I was just a viewer, you know, if I, if I wasn't somebody that knew about the clip beforehand and I was just watching the clip, I would have been like, what the hell? Because it, it was such a random, you know, change of subject. It went from talking about violent, real-world violence to just randomly start saying teenagers are playing Grand Theft Auto and they're violating traffic laws. You know, they can shoot people and kill people in the game and all this other stuff and shoot at police officers. You know, what? You know, how, how does that answer the question at all? It just didn't, didn't answer the, um, the journalist question there. But, you know, this has happened for a long time where, you know, politicians in the media will constantly blame video games. Now, there's, there's um, a reason the media does it, and there's a reason that the politicians do it. Now, the reason the media constantly blames, um, you know, violent video games like GTA is because it's easy coverage. It's simple because they see problems in the real world, violence in the real world, and they can say, you know, look, here is um, GTA, this is causing it, and what happens is, you know, a lot of their um, readers or the people that watch the media, you know, especially, you know, you know, papers like New York Times, um, you know, they had a story in which they were actually complaining about kids playing too much video games actually a few months ago, so you have pretty much older people usually that will read stuff like this and they'll look at this and they might have kids or they might have grandkids and they'll say, you know, my grandson or my son or daughter, they're being influenced by um, Grand Theft Auto, these violent video games. I got to do something about this. This is poison to our kids' minds. And so that grabs the reader's attention. They will read it. They'll watch it. And what also happens is the media will pick and choose specific studies because what will happen is you'll see the media where occasionally they'll pick a, a random, um, you know, study which will say that there's a c correlation between real-world violence and video game violence. And I'm going to tell you there is no correlation. Now, before I graduated college a year and a half ago, my final paper, I actually wrote a 20-page paper about the links between violent video games and real-world violence. And I'm going to tell you for a fact there is no credible evidence that there is any kind of link between real-world violence and video games. What the media basically does is the vast majority of studies out there, the vast majority of them, 
say that there is no link between real-world violence or violent video games, or they'll say that, that it can't be proven. And what will happen is the media will, out of 10 studies, you might have one or two that might say, you know, violent video games cause real-world violence. The media will choose to report on those one or two, but ignore the eight others that say that the um, that there is no correlation between them. Um, so studies that show that there's no link between violent video games and real-world violence are much less likely to be reported by the media. That is a proven fact. You can look at media coverage. You can see they are much less likely to report on, sto on stories and, you know, studies that cover violent video games and saying that they, there's no correlation between them. And even the, the studies that do claim that there is correlation between violent video games and real world violence, they're flawed and they're deeply biased. You know, I don't, I don't trust them. I don't believe them. And you know, we have ourselves as proof. Everybody watching this video, pretty much most of the people watching this video are play GTA, you're familiar with GTA, or have played some kind of violent video games. We have ourselves as proof. We know that we have played violent video games for years. You know, I've played violent video games since I was a teenager. I've even played violent video games when I was a little kid on the PlayStation 1. And never in my point, never in my point, not one time in my life did I ever want to commit a crime, not one point in my life did I ever want to harm somebody because I played a game like GTA. That is just absolute nonsense. Now, moving on to the politicians. The politicians, the reason that they blame, you know, violent video games is because they have a real-world problem. So, you know, in Chicago's case, Chicago had a, um, a huge rise in carjackings. And so the stupid politicians, instead of looking at the areas where carjackings are happening, trying to coordinate with police and trying to figure out how can we stop this? Is this, is this a gang doing this? Is this the mafia doing this? Who is doing the large amount of these carjackings? You know, is this maybe people that um, have a drug problem and are trying to get quick money? Because, you know, drugs, for instance, drug addiction, that is the reason for a lot of crimes because they're trying to get quick money just to pay for their habits. Instead of looking at problems like that and trying to figure out how can we reduce the overall crime rate, how can we deal with these carjackings, the politicians in Chicago are like, you know what? Let's blame Grand Theft Auto instead. That is the reason that there's so many carjackings. It is because of a game like Grand Theft Auto. No, look, it can't be any other problem. It has to be because of Grand Theft Auto. Yes, because, you know, um, uh, criminals are stripping cars for parts and selling them because they apparently learned that, uh, how to do that in GTA. Now in Australia, you have an increase in violence against women as the media story is talking about here. And instead of trying to figure out, you know, where is this happening? How can we prevent this? The politician in this case, you know, Peter Dutton, um, he's just basically like, you know, teenagers, when they're playing Grand Theft Auto, they're badly influenced by it and blah, 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 this, that, that doesn't answer the question or doesn't, uh, that's not a solution at all. You know, that's just him able to just quickly label GTA and just try to move on, move away from the subject. Um, that is not a solution. And even banning banning GTA is not going to reduce the amount of carjackings in Chicago. Banning GTA is not going to reduce the violence against women. Only real actual action, real law enforcement action is going to deal with that. Trying to figure out how to fix this problem, not blaming it on some nonsense like a video game. And there's something else that these politicians are missing out. The most popular game out there right now, do you know what the most popular GTA game out there right now is? It's GTA Online, which is, you know, technically part of GTA 5. It may become its own standalone thing in the future, but that's what the vast majority of people are playing right now. That's the most popular thing. And in GTA Online, you can actually play as a female character. So in GTA Online, you can actually make your own character where in the other GTA games, you would have, you know, a character that was already created for you, a character of a backstory. In GTA Online, you can make your own character. So you, you can make a female character. Plenty of female gamers play Grand Theft Auto Online. And I remember um, years ago, my, act my favorite game of all time is actually a game called Saints Row 2. And that game came out in 2008. And I remember when Saints Row 2 first came out, the media was just going all over Saints Row 2. And they constantly kept saying that this game, you know, encourages violence against women. But what they didn't, um, they didn't research the game. They clearly didn't look into the game because in Saints Row 2, you can play as a female gang member. So you can be a female character. And there's other female gang members that will actually kill you and shoot at you. So you fight female characters in that game. The game isn't specifically encouraging you to just go out and just murder NPCs. That's an option in the game, sure, but the game isn't specifically telling you to do that. You know, it's an open world game, you play as a criminal, that's an end of story. I don't believe that a game like Grand Theft Auto or a game like Saints Row is going to encourage somebody to commit real world violence. I don't believe that that's factual. No rational person is going to sit there and play GTA and want to commit real world crimes. And I'm going to tell you right now, the few people that, that are arrested by the police, because there are a few, you know, crazy people that are occasionally arrested by the police when they steal a car or do something bad and they, they might say that they did it because of a game like GTA. I'm gonna say those people are extremely rare 
and the media picks and chooses those people. And anybody that goes and steals a car because of a game like GTA, those people had major psychological issues before they even played a game like GTA. Because like I said, no rational person is going to play a game like GTA and then go and commit real world crimes, you know. If you have good parents, you know, they teach you right from wrong, you should have a basic understanding of this. No video game or movie is going to change that from you. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that this nonsense stops. I think that Australia has actually banned a lot of games, because I remember that Australia actually banned Dead Rising in the past. That was actually a game that I like. I wonder if Dead Rising is still banned. Somebody in the comments let me know. But thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, you my comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.